Today I'd like to read to you uh, from the Apostle Paul, and uh, the scripture reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to read verses 14 through 20, and the uh, translation I'm using is the uh, Common English Bible. So let us listen to the words of Paul. The love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this. One died for the sake of all, therefore all died. He died for the sake of all so that those who are alive should live not for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So then, from this point on, we don't recognize people by human standards, even though we used to know Christ by human standards. This isn't how we know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of a new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, the new things have arrived. All these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, who gave us a ministry of reconciliation. In other words, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ by not counting people's sins against them. He has trusted us with this message of reconciliation. So we are all ambassadors who represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We beg you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. Christians are changed people. A few weeks ago, we looked at a passage of Scripture uh, that we refer to as the birthday of the church in Acts chapter 2. And the apostle Peter and the other apostles were preaching to a great crowd of people on this uh, birthday of the church, uh, and he was calling them to Christ. And one of the things that uh, Peter was saying in his sermon in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 is that you need to change your hearts and minds. And Luke, the writer of that story, tells us that with that sermon on that day, around 3,000 people came to Christ. So people were changed. In this scripture reading today that I've shared with you, the Apostle Paul is talking about how we are, as followers of Christ, changed people. And there's three ideas that come from this passage I want us to look at today. First of all, is in the first verse I read to you, verse 14. Paul writes, the love of Christ controls us. So for those of us who have come to Christ, who believe in Christ, what is it that controls us? He says it is the love of Christ. And he goes on to explain that. He says, one died for the sake of all. And this is also verse 14. And then in verse 15, he says, He died for the sake of all, so that those who are alive should not, for, uh, should not live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So he's referring to the cross. And he's saying because of the cross, we understand that the love of Christ controls us. And that changes us. He said we are no longer self-centered people. Now we desire to please him, the one who died for us and who was raised. And so we call Jesus Lord. Now we need to understand when Paul is saying this, that, that Paul is, is describing our relationship with God uh, from a Jewish point of view. And that Jewish point of view is found in the Jewish Bible that we call the Old Testament. And it flows right into the New Testament and takes us as believers in Jesus to the cross. So let me kind of give you a, just a brief summary of the Jewish viewpoint from Scripture of God and humanity. Here's what the Jewish Bible teaches, that God is transcendent. In other words, God is beyond us. God is the creator of all. He is above and beyond the creation. And the Jewish Bible also is very emphatic that God is holy, absolutely holy. And because of the holiness 
of this transcendent God. God cannot, by his nature, be in relationship with that which is wrong or sin. And so the Jewish Bible teaches that when humanity sins, that relationship with God is broken. Now that's taught in the very earliest pages of the Jewish Bible, but it goes throughout the Jewish Bible. I mean, you think of the story of Adam and Eve. Uh, that story is a story that depicts God in relationship with humanity until Adam and Eve sinned. And then what? That relationship was broken. And you go to passages like uh, the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 59. Uh, Isaiah writes that our sins and our iniquities separate us from God. So God is holy. When we sin, that relationship is broken. That, that is throughout the Jewish scripture. Now, how do we solve that dilemma as human beings? We've broken the relationship. Paul tells us in the New Testament that all of us are sinners. So all of us have broken their relationship with the Holy God. What can we do? The answer from the Bible is we can do nothing. Because no matter what we do, we are still sinners. So what the scriptures teaches us is that God acted on our behalf. God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And that is ultimately fulfilled in the cross. And that's why Paul writes, it's the love of Christ that controls us. Now, the second thing that Paul emphasizes in this scripture today is that because of this, we see people in a different way. As followers of Christ, we see people in a different way. Let's listen again to what Paul writes in the, in the scripture. In verse 16, he says, we won't recognize people by human standards. And then he goes on to say in verse 17, anyone in Christ is a new creation. New things have arrived. So he says that we don't see people by human standards. So how is it that you and I see people now that we understand that the love of Christ controls us? Well, the answer is we see that every person has value. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you may have done in your life, good or bad. You have value because of the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ is for everybody. So you have value. And everybody else that's not in this room has value. Now, we kind of say that so much, maybe we take that for granted, but it's re that's really a pretty profound idea. Because you see, in human nature, it's natural for human beings to stick with their own. And uh, that's, that's been since the beginning of human history. Why is it that people stick with their own kind? You know, family sticking together and extended clan sticking together and people who look alike and talk alike sticking together. Why, why, do, why has that been the case throughout human history? Well, the answer is, is for survival. Uh, human beings like to be with people like them and they, they find safety in the numbers of having people like them with them. And throughout history, human beings have been afraid of people who weren't like them. If they looked differently, if they talked differently, if they acted differently, if they came from a different place, they were afraid of those people. And sometimes there was a good reason for that, because maybe those people were coming to conquer them, right? So it's a survival instinct that human nature is, we just like our own folks. And, and yet... What the scripture's teaching is really counterintuitive when you think about it to, to that human nature. Because what the scripture teaches us is that everybody has value, whether they're like us or not. Everybody is important. Jesus challenges us, he stretches us beyond our comfort zone. 
When he gave the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, he said, Go make disciples of all nations. Everybody. And uh, the New Testament was written in Greek, and that word in Greek that is translated as nations is the, words, the word ethnos, from which we get the word ethnic. So what he is saying is, you go to all the ethnic groups and make them disciples. The Apostle Paul in Galatians said that in Christ, there is neither Greek nor Jew, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, that we are all one in Christ. And so we see people in a different way. The third thing that Paul uh, teaches us from this scripture is that our, our mission as followers of Christ is clearly defined. Now, what is our mission? Listen to what Paul says. Down in uh, verse uh, 18, he says, We have been given a ministry of reconciliation. In verse 19, he says, We are given a message of reconciliation. In verse 20, he says, We are ambassadors who represent Christ. And then I really like the way this modern translation translates the next thought. Then it goes on to say, God is negotiating with you through us. So he's, here's what he's saying. He's saying our mission is this. We have a ministry and a message of reconciliation to the world. And we are out in the world representing Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. And then he goes on in this particular translation to say, we are negotiating for Christ. So it's like we're out there in the world talking to folks, and we're interacting with folks, and we're negotiating with them, saying, listen, I got a message of good news of reconciliation for you. And that's what we're called to do. That's our mission. What does reconciliation mean? Reconciliation means that two parties have been broken, and they are brought back together. That's reconciliation. And so the ministry of reconciliation and the message of reconciliation is that, number one, our relationship with God was broken, and through Jesus, that relationship is reconnected. That's reconciliation. But it goes further to say that we are reconciled with one another. There's one body. There's one church. It doesn't make any difference who you are. We just talked about that. And so, so there's not only reconciliation between God and humans, there's reconciliation between human being to human being. That is our mission, the ministry of reconciliation. You see, God loves us, and we see that in the cross. And when we understand that, that changes our life, and we fall in love with God. And when we fall in love with God because we have understood the message of the cross, then the next step is then we fall in love with people. And we try to share that message and love one another. And when you think about what Paul is saying, Paul is saying the very same thing Jesus said. Jesus said if you want to take the Bible and boil it down to its basic essence, here it is. Number one, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And number two, love your neighbor as yourself. That's it, folks. That's what it's all about. That's the Bible. And so the ministry of reconciliation is you and I, as followers of Christ, being called to take that message out to the world to say, we have good news. You can be in relationship with God. And we have more good news this world can find relationship with people. In a broken world, there can be reconciliation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that all comes about because the love of Christ controls us. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray.